Welcome to TechQuest. Hi everyone, Chris with Quest Network Services here, and today we're going to talk about the requirements that uh, Google and Yahoo are now asking people to do in order to send email messages to them. And what I'm talking about are the DMARC requirements the, that you need to have in place uh, beginning in February of 2024. Because if your records are not set up correctly, uh, your emails will be rejected anytime you try to send messages to uh, Google or Yahoo or, or some of the other providers that are following these policies. So most of my clients use Microsoft 365 to send out emails to their customers or, their, or the people that they want to communicate with, but Microsoft doesn't always have the setup correctly. So I'm going to go through and walk through with you today on how to correctly set up the DMARC, DKIM, and SPF records for Microsoft 365, as well as how to add a domain name that you want to use to send out messages from your 365 account. So what you'll need is you'll need the admin uh, credentials or, or the admin account for your Microsoft 365 service, uh, because that's the account that's going to have the permissions to set up these, uh, these requirements. Uh, you'll also need access to your uh, domain registrar like GoDaddy or Network Solutions um, or one of those providers because what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to add DNS records to your domain name in order for this to work properly. So let's go and let's take a look and see what is required, what, what we need to do to make this happen. So I'm going to uh, show you my screen here and what I have done here is I have signed into my Microsoft 365 account uh, as the admin and what I'm going to then do is go into the admin account and the Microsoft 365 admin center and what the first thing we're going to want to do let's say you're starting this out uh, fresh, is we want to add, the, add a domain name that Microsoft's going to use to send out emails on your behalf. And so to do that, we're going to go into, we're going to show all, and we're going to go into the settings here, and then we're going to go into domains. And right now, these are the current domains I have added to our Microsoft 365 account request and so I'm going to add another one. So the domain name I'm going to add for this uh, this time it is our qns.email domain name and this is our uh, GoDaddy uh, records here. So I'm going to go into domains, I'm going to click add domain and I'm going to type in qns.email so I'm going to say use this domain so I'm going to click on that and now we have to verify that we actually own this domain otherwise Microsoft will not allow us to add it to the account so it says before we can set up qns.email we need you to sign into your domain host and verify that you own the domain learn how to find your domain host sign into GoDaddy. So already Microsoft knows that we registered our domain name through GoDaddy. So they make it pretty easy here. So we're going to just basically click on verify here and that's going to prompt us here to connect our GoDaddy account to Microsoft and we're just going to click connect. Now what this is going to do, this is going to verify our domain name with GoDaddy, you're basically proving that we own the domain. And so we're going to let this go ahead and verify. Okay, now that we have verified the domain name, it's saying, how do you want to connect your domain? Connect your domain to Microsoft services so that you can use email and instant messaging. There are a couple of options to consider depending on how you'd like to manage domain name services, records for your domain qns.email. 
Um, we could just let Microsoft add the records automatically, and that's typically the easiest thing to do. Um, that way they're, they're put in there correctly, and you don't have to worry about you know, accidentally typing something in wrong, and it not working, and then having to troubleshoot why things aren't working properly. Um, years ago, you used to have to add them manually, and so Microsoft would essentially um, give you the what needed to be put in there, and you had to copy and paste it. And sometimes you copy it in with, a, with, a, with a, a space in there, and then that doesn't work. So there, there's a lot of things that could go wrong that way. So they they have simplified this process um, immensely. So we're going to go ahead and say continue here. It says, add DNS records to start routing email through Microsoft 365 for QNS.email. Select Exchange and Online Protections, then add DNS records. We'll prompt you to sign into GoDaddy to approve the connection and automatically add the DNS records required for service. If you don't want to set up a service, clear the, the selection and they won't add it automatically. So these are essentially down here. These are the records that they'll need to add in order to use Microsoft 365 to send emails with this domain. So they're going to add an MX record, they're going to add a TXT record, and a CNAME record. So we're going to let Microsoft do that automatically and just click the Add DNS Records button. It's going to once again connect to our GoDaddy account. We're going to go ahead and click Connect. Go ahead and let this run. Domain setup is complete. QNS email is all set up, and you can now view, manage it from your domain's list. You can go to active users, add new users, and set up email addresses or aliases for everyone to use the QNS.email for email. So that was pretty easy to add the domain to Microsoft 365. So if we go over to our GoDaddy account here, here are the DNS records for QNS.email. And I'm going to refresh this because we had this open when uh, Microsoft was doing their thing. So we're going to go ahead and go to, click on uh, DNS. And now we have a bunch of records now that have been added. We have these CNAME records here for Microsoft and for Windows. The auto discover for Outlook.com. If I go to the next page here, you're going to see that TXT record, which is this is actually our SPF record uh, that Microsoft uses for Microsoft 365. So now you can actually send email messages from Microsoft 365 using this domain. However, because of the requirements of Google, Yahoo, and some of the other providers that are out there, there are other records that they require to basically authenticate that you are actually uh, sending messages correctly. So if you don't set up these records, you, you could get a message that says you're unauthorized to email this person. And this is essentially to combat spam and some of the other things going on. Uh, so I'm going to actually read to you a little bit about why they're doing this. So. Um, on October 3rd of 2023, Google and Yahoo announced requirements that bulk senders must have DMARC in place beginning February of 2024. As part of our mission to make DMARC accessible to all, they're basically, uh, they put a guide together for, and, and essentially what I'm going through here with you guys. Um, so essentially, who's affected by this? So if you send 5,000 messages a day or more, um, you're, gonna, you're required now to have a DMARC record policy in place uh, in your DN, DNS. Um, These messages must pass DMARC alignment or they will not be delivered. This includes messages sent on behalf of your organization. So if you use a third party service like MailChimp or Constant Contact, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your record set up correctly or your essentially your messages are going to be blocked because you're not following their requirements. So basically, why is this happening? Well, 
Google and Yahoo both have recognized the importance of email and they're taking steps towards making it more safe and secure. So by focusing on email validation, they're helping prevent unwanted spam and potential bad actors from reaching their customers. Sending from a domain that has a DMARC in place has the additional benefit of improving inbox placement. A DMARC record helps ISPs uh, or internet service providers identify you as a sender that is serious about following established email standards and reducing your spam liability. Okay, so essentially we have to set up these records uh, in order to comply with their requirements. And if you don't do it, uh, you could potentially not get your messages sent out. So there's a couple things we're going to need to do to add these records and make sure that they're done correctly. So we're going to go through that now. Okay, so now to set up the DMARC record. Um, it's essentially another TXT record. So what we're going to do is we're going to click in our GoDaddy DNS system here. We're going to click add new record. And it's a TXT record. So we're going to click this little drop down here and click TXT. And so the name or the host name is going to essentially be uh, underscore D mark so we're going to put that in here um, in some cases depending on who your registrar are you'll it'll be underscore D mark dot and then your domain name which would be QNS dot email and then the value is going to be this and I'm going to copy and paste it in here So the value is going to be V equals D mark one, which is essentially the version number of the D mark P equals now instead of it being none, which is essentially going to do nothing. It should be reject R E J B -E C T. Uh, you can also do P equals quarantine. If you want to quarantine the messages reject is, a t is the typical standard of what they want for the record. Um, RUA equals mail to so this is where you want your DMARC reports to go now I have a, a separate email address that handles our DMARC records and it's going to be reports at quest oops, quest internet .net. now keep in mind wherever you are sending these reports you're going to get a ton of emails a day uh, from all the different uh, email processing companies because they're going to send their reports there. Uh, you want to set the time to live or the TTL to one hour. Um, and then that's essentially it. So again, the value is V equals D mark one semicolon space P equals reject semicolon space R U A equals mail to colon and then you put the email address you want the reports to go to um, and then set the time to live to one hour now once you do that you click save GoDaddy is essentially going to want to double check because we put the domain name in there remember GoDaddy you don't necessarily need to do that so if you want the record to be underscore dmark dot QNS dot email um, you just basically put yes like that click yes and it's going to update and now let's take a look at that record you're going to see it dropped the domain name off for the value so it's just underscore dmark okay um the next thing we want to do is we want to do the dkim records so microsoft 365 is going to generate those records for us and we just need to essentially copy and paste it from uh, the 365 system. So to do that, we're going to go back into Microsoft 365 here. We're going to go into the Admin Center. And we're going to just click Show All. And we're going to want to go into uh, Microsoft Exchange. So we're going to click on Exchange. And that's going to load the screen here. 
And now we want to go to other features. So we're going to click on other features on the left hand side here. And you're going to want to go down to where it says DKIM, which is essentially the settings for the DKIM for Microsoft 365. Once we go there, we're going to click on this hyperlink here. which will take us into the Security and Compliance Center. And we'll take that a second to load. So right here is where we have all of our domain names uh, listed here. So we're going to do the DKIMs. I've already set them up for these domains already. Um, we're going to do the one for QNS.email, which is the new domain that we just added. So we're going to click on that. This little sidebar will, will show up here. It says no DKIM keys saved for this domain. So we're going to want Microsoft to create them. So we're going to uh, click create DKIM keys. And it's going to go ahead and do that now. going to click on this little slider here. Because there was an error in uh, uh, essentially um, the, when we tried to create the keys, uh, we have to essentially go back in and have it try to generate the signatures. And of course, um, it's not going to work because we don't have the record. So we essentially have to add two C name records uh, in order for the DKIM to be set up properly. And the records that Microsoft wants us to uh, set up our right here. So it says, please publish the following two C name records first. Uh, the domain name, qns.email, the host name, sector one, and then this is essentially points to which are the value. So we're gonna set up two C name records in GoDaddy. So let's go over to GoDaddy. We're gonna once again click new, add new record. This time, instead of a TXT record, we're going to set up a C name record. So we're going to click the drop down here and select C name. Now, the name and the value we're going to get from Microsoft. So we're going to go back over to the tab that has the, uh, the domain keys tab. And so the first thing we want is the domain name or the host name, which is right here selector1 dot underscore domain key. So this is the, the essentially the host name. And we're going to do a control C as in Charlie to copy that. Go back over to GoDaddy and we're going to do control V as in Victor to paste that in there. So we've copied and pasted the host name in there. And now we need to put the value in. So we're going to go back over to Microsoft and it says points to addresser value. So we're going to grab all this information here, this selector one dash QNS dash email. So grab everything up till the end there. Control C to copy. Go back over to GoDaddy. Type or go into the value. Control V is in Victor to paste in that value. And we're going to set the time to live to one hour. All right, once we do that, we're gonna click save and it's gonna update the DNS records. And now we have another C name record to add because there's two when it comes to DKIM. So once again, we're gonna click add new record. We're gonna choose the type of C name again. And we're gonna go back over to Microsoft and grab the second host name, which is right after the first one we put in here, 
selector two dot domain key, which is the, the host name. Control C to copy. Control V as in Victor to paste for the name. And now let's grab the value, which is selector two dash Q and S. So we're just gonna grab all of this information here. Control C again to copy. Go back over to GoDaddy. Control V as in Victor to paste. And again, set the time to live or the TTL to one hour. And we're gonna click save. Now, depending on your domain name provider, it can sometimes take several hours for these settings to take effect. And in some cases, it could even take up to two days. So um, again, depending on your registrar, um, you know, you, you may have to wait a little bit before the records actually uh, go into effect. Um, we're gonna go back over to Microsoft here. We're gonna click OK on this error message. We're gonna close this little sidebar. We're gonna click refresh here to refresh the keys. And then we're gonna go back into QNS here and see if we can actually uh, sign the messages for the, D, the DKIM signatures. We're gonna click the little slider here and see what happens. And sometimes, so we, we're still getting an error message. So we're gonna come back here in uh, a few hours and try this again because clearly the records have not taken effect yet. Even Microsoft says, if you've already published the C name records, sync will take place a few minutes to as many as four days based on your specific DNS. Return and retry this step later. So we're going to pause the video now and go back to it in a few hours and see if the uh, records have taken place. So we'll see it back then. Okay, let's go and check and see if we can get DKIM to sign in. So we're going to once again go back into the domain keys uh, in your Microsoft 365 system and we're going to once again try to click on this button and see if this slider works. So we're going to click on that and see if it will register the keys. Okay, it uh, looks like it took it. It says security. It may take several minutes to synchronize the status change. So we're gonna click okay on that. And now you see we have a blue enable sign here. And uh, now we can just close out of this. If you ever need to rotate the DKIM keys or if you're ever told to do that, this is where you would do that. You would click the button that says rotate DKIM keys. But we don't need to do that because everything now is set up correctly. We're gonna click close. And now we're going to verify our settings by going to an external website and just checking our settings to make sure we did everything correctly. Okay, so we're gonna to wanna to check and see if our records that we just entered are set up correctly. To do that, we're using a third party website to check our records for us. And we're using DMARCN. And so we're going to go down to the DMARC record checker. We're going to scroll down here. We're going to type in our domain name, qns.email, and we're going to have them inspect the domain to see if we set the records up correctly. So we're going to go ahead and, and inspect the domain. And it says, great job. You have a valid DMARC record that provides visibility into the entirety of your email programs and helps ensure you meet email setting, sending best practices. So this gives you a little bit of details. It shows what the, the little tags mean. V is the DMARC one. Um, it's obviously version one. Uh, the P we have set as reject. Basically, if anything fails, it rejects the message. Uh, you could also use quarantine or none is the other one uh, that you can use. Um, but if you use none, then it's, it kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, the RUA, which is our, our, where our reports are going to go, and we have it set to go to reports at questinternet.net, and that's where our DMARC reports uh, get sent. So 
I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, please list them below. Remember to also subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Um, and if you're struggling with DMARC records or DKIM records or you just uh, need some help with it, please feel, feel free to reach out to our office. We're here Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time and Saturdays 10 till 3. You can visit us on, online at questnetworkservices.com or give us a call at 773-761-3555. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more like it, hit subscribe and feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching.